So we're going to take what we learned last week with uh, electron configuration. We're going to take what we're uh, what we know about the periodic table and electron configuration and about all these things. We want to put them together here. So if you look at your paper that I've given you here on the front page, you will see there's uh, a table here that we're going to organize all of our thoughts. OK. And when we organize our thoughts, we're going to first focus on sodium. Now, if you look at the periodic table, and it's nice to have a periodic table, but if you look at a periodic table, you'll notice that we basically taken sodium and magnesium, two, two elements that are beside each other on the left side of the periodic table, and then magnesium and calcium, two uh, elements that are on top of each other. So the way you see these in the table that I made is the same way they're actually on the periodic table. And our goal here is if we can understand things that are beside each other and things that are on top of each other, then we can understand the way they go all the way across and down. So the first thing we're going to do is break it down to something we learned back in, back like in September or October. How many protons and electrons are there in sodium? We look at the periodic table and we'd say that's easy, 11 and 11, because we know that that is the atomic number. Very good. Not the atomic mass. We don't care about that right now. We care mostly about the atomic number now. Okay? And sodium is 11 and 11. But what about the electron configuration? Well, that's what we did last week. So we always start with 1s2. We start out with 1s2. Remember, if we're starting with 11 total electrons and we use 2, we're down to 9 now. We do two more, we're down to seven, right? Remember this? And then we're, oh, we've used six more, so we're down to one. And last but not least, then we would be 3s1. And that's how we get that little one right there, okay? If you kind of remember doing that, that's where we were um, at last week. The easier way to write it, I think, <laughs> is to use a noble gas configuration. Um, and remember, the noble gas configuration just saves you a little bit of time. So we would say, well, wait a minute. Let's only worry about the valence electrons. And the valence electrons, if you look, is the highest number, which happens to be three, right? So the highest number happens to be three. So really, I'm only caring about this one right here. All of this stuff right here is all going to be represented by an E, which is neon, which is a noble gas on the periodic table. So everything that I put here in a circle, maybe I should use yellow, if I can find yellow. I don't know if I can ever find it when I use yellow. Everything in yellow right here is representing neon. So instead of writing all that, I could just put that right there. Remember that a little bit, kind of, sort of? Yeah? How did I get neon? Let's, let's look at this from a standpoint of what our buddy Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr said that the nucleus is like the sun in the middle, right? So I put 11 plus, all right? I put 11 plus right there. And then the electrons are like the planets that are orbiting the sun. So the first thing I would do, and I'm going to erase my markings up here because I want to try to make sense of this. The first thing I would do is I'd say, all right, well, if I put all the electrons that are in the first, very first uh, orbital or first uh, ring around the sun, that would be represented by the number one. How many electrons are represented in this orbital right here? Just two. Okay, so I'm going to draw a circle and I want to put one, two. Very good. Next thing I'm going to do, let me change colors here. I'm going to focus on the second orbital. And why did I circle both of these? Because both of those start with a two. Now, add up how many total electrons do I have available in the twos there? So that would be six plus two, which would be eight. Draw another circle, and now here we go. Are you ready? I draw a circle, and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, what about here in the 3s, which is really, I don't really care about the s so much in the Niels uh, Bohr 
uh, model, I only really care about the one, and there's only one and the third orbital. So I draw a ring right there, and then I put my one electron right there. And that's what I would call uh, a sort of a diagram that probably you learned in middle school. How many remember drawing something like this in middle school? Yeah, oh wow, so awesome. All right, so let's then go over to magnesium. So when we go over to magnesium, it's the same way on the periodic table. So on the periodic table, you're going from left to right, just like you are on this. So that means how many protons, electrons, and magnesium would have. If you're just going one over to the right, that means you're going from 11 to, yeah, don't make it tough. It's just 12, 12 and 12, good job, cool. And what does that mean about the electron configuration? It's almost the same except for 3s2. Awesome. Good job. So boom, boom, boom. Right there. 3s2 is the only difference. Okay. The one and only difference, which means then on the noble gas configuration, same thing there. That's the only difference right there. So sorry, I'm going a little fast here. Then we would look at the, again, diagram that we drew over here. The the sun would be in the middle here, and this would be your um, 12 protons in the middle. And then we would have um, our circle with our two electrons, our circle with our eight electrons, and then, of course, one more, putting our two right there. So that would represent this two right here represents this outer and this outer. Instead of one outer, it's two. And remember, we call those outer electrons something called valence electrons. Remember here in that term, the valence electrons are kind of the outer electrons that kind of do all the work and help predict the behavior of the specific element or atom in this case. Feeling good about this? Okay, things are gonna get drastically different once we go down here to calcium. Now, if you remember right, Calcium is going to have, um, you're going down, so that means it's not going to have 13 electrons and protons. And if you have a periodic table handy, you would say, oh, I can look at that. Calcium is 20. So 20 valence elect, or excuse me, 20 protons and 20 electrons, not valence electrons, regular electrons. So that's going to complicate things just a little bit as far as electron configuration goes. It's going to be a lot bigger. So as we're working with 20, we get rid of 2 by doing 1s2. And remember from the um, gizmo activity, you start at the bottom and work your way up. And sometimes you have to zigzag over and make sure you go in the right order. 1s2, 2s2, right? And then we're going to go 2p6, 3s2, sort of makes sense there. But now because calcium is in the fourth period, we need to pull in uh, and not forget about our 3p6, then our 4s2, and that's basically where we would um, where we would stop there, right? And how will we know we stop? 6 plus 2, 6 plus 2, that's 8 times 8, or 8 times 2, which is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We've used all 20 electrons in this situation. An easier way to write this, of course, instead of having, um, instead of having all of this here, I don't know why this is doing this. Um, my computer seems to be slowing down, but that's okay. Instead of, um, we would put argon right there, and then we would then add 4s2, and that's just a nice, easy way to do it. It makes life a lot easier for us. The noble gas configuration is a lot easier down here. All right. Questions? Our diagram is going to be much more complicated because we now have a fourth level. Up here, we only went to the third level, so we only had this third ring. Because we have this fourth level, it's going to look something like this. We put the 20 protons in the middle that represent the nucleus. Draw a circle. Put two there. Still, it's only two. And no matter what element you have, it's still only going to be two electrons in that first energy level. Then we draw another circle. We put our eight. 
just like that. And then another circle and put our H right there. So we've taken care of all the ones, all the twos, and all the threes. Now we're ready to dip into the fourth energy level. And this is now going to give us those two right there. All right. So we got all these taken care of. Questions so far? Okay, so then we kind of want to summarize some things. So let's look at it in the standpoint of this right here. As we go from magnesium down to calcium, so let's really focus on this part right here. What are we seeing right here? Well, what we're seeing is you increase an entire layer. You have one, two, three layers right here, okay? Down here, you have one, two, three, four layers. So we're increasing the layers. And we could keep going, right? If we grabbed our periodic table and we went to strontium, we'd have five layers. If we went to barium, six layers. Keep on going down your periodic table. You're just adding layers, layers, layers. Well, what exactly is that doing? Well, we'll talk about that in a second. But the big thing is you're also doing is you're decreasing the attraction between the nucleus and the electrons. Just like you think about when you learned about the solar system, Mercury had such a high attraction to the sun because of its location and some of the outer planets did not there there happens to be a reason for that and it has to do with proximity it also has to do with the fact that all electrons are charged how they are charged negatively just like the attraction between the nucleus and the electrons is opposite and attractive what do we know about like charges negatives would do what to each other they would repel so we'll talk about this in a second, but the deal is attraction and repulsions, okay? Now, as we go from left to right, we look at sodium and magnesium, we're seeing another huge trend. Every time you go to the right by one, you're increasing the number of protons. Protons are huge. They're 2,000 times larger than electrons, and they also have a positive one charge. So that means the attraction increases as you go one spot to the right, but the layers don't increase. If you kept going sodium, magnesium, jump over to aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, keep going across the third period, everybody in the third period has how many layers? One, two, three. So even though you're adding layers, or excuse me, even though you're adding protons, the layers are staying the same. So you're actually increasing the attraction between the nucleus and the electrons. So let's go. and take a look at how that's a big so everything we just looked at is like a big idea like keep those 